The weekend of April 20th, 2008 was a pretty historic weekend for IndyCar. This was the first season that the IRL and Champ Car merged together, unifying open wheel racing in America. Part of the deal was the IRL was going to adopt some of the Champ Car races, but unfortunately there was a scheduling conflict. IndyCar tried to reschedule the race in Motegi, Japan, but was unable to, so it had to take place on the same weekend as the Long Beach Grand Prix. This resulted in two races taking place on the same weekend both rewarding championship points towards the IndyCar championship. There was some major differences in the two races though. The regular full-time IRL guys competed in Japan, while all the previous Champ Car teams competed in Long Beach. Both these races were very historic in their own way. In Japan, you had the first woman ever winning an IndyCar race. And in Long Beach, it would be the end of an era and the last Champ Car race ever. In this video, we're going to look at the events that took place in the IRL race in Motegi, Japan. You're looking live at Twin Ring Motegi in Motegi, Japan, and the best view we can show you is a vacant turn four. That's right, nobody working on the weepers that postponed this race for 24 hours. This was the work just one day ago. They actually brought in a special machine that sucked out 10,000 gallons of water. No, it wasn't that little one right there. The water just kept seeping up through the track all day yesterday. They finally had to postpone the race for 24 hours, as now we will finally get to run here in Motegi, Japan. As you just briefly saw there in the intro to the race, wet weather unfortunately affected the weekend, and the track took on a lot of water. The race was delayed nearly 24 hours due to weepers, which is essentially water seeping out of the track. The track officials there in Motegi worked hard, finally got it cleared up, and they were able to go racing the next day. We're getting ready to go green. The pace car pulls in. They come out of four, down the front straightaway, and we are green at Motegi. And again, just like last year, we have a car spinning into the wall, and it is Marco Andretti. So the cold tires that got Koski Matsura last year bites Marco Andretti, and he is out of his second straight race. So almost immediately, Marco Andretti gets loose on cold tires and finds the wall in turn number one, bringing out the first caution of the day. When the race resumed, we would see the first long green flag run of the day with Helio Castroneves leading the way. See the sparks? There's a couple of bumps through turn one and two on full tanks. You'll see that throughout the race. On lap 46, green flag pit stops would begin. Ed Carpenter was the first one to come to pit road and shortly after Danica Patrick. As Danica was on pit road, the yellow flag would come out for a problem involving Marty Roth. Unfortunately, there was no replay of this as ESPN was kind of borrowing a feed from their provider there in Japan. A big moment also happened to Hideki Muto as well, as he almost hits the pace car coming out of pit lane. It's actually after they come in through the stop and they're about ready to leave, and then you pass the timeline, which they did, the... <laughs> and you know what ends up happening is that when you have your foot on the gas as a rookie sometimes you've got your foot too. A few drivers like the Ganassi drivers of Dan Weldon and Scott Dixon also had to pit before the pits were open for an emergency splash and go because they were about to run out of fuel. The race would then restart on lap 56 with Castro Neves still out front. We're trying to get it from Roger Penske. He may have short pitted as well, not taking a full tank of fuel. We're back to green. Here on lap number 57 of 200, and look at the action going on underneath. That is Dixon with lap traffic in front of him there with the, the 15 of Buddy Rice, who is a lap down. And on the high side, that is Briscoe, and they're going to split him. Something's got to give. Another long green flag run would ensue, but unfortunately the third caution would come out on lap 91 just before the pit window opened. Vitor Mira found the wall and got himself in trouble. And we're getting word that Vitor Mira may have just had some contact with the wall. And we have our third caution here on lap 92 of 200. So 
We're hearing that uh, VTOR, we don't know exactly how much damage. We'll see if our host broadcasters from Japan can give us a view of exactly what happened. There is the National Guard Delphi machine. Looks like it's uh, still none the worse for wear. Of course, we haven't seen the right side yet. All the leaders would end up pinning pit road, and this is where we would see the first lead change of the day, as Scott Dixon was able to get off pit road before Helio Castroneves. Scott Dixon would lead the field to green, and this would be another long greed flag run. He had the faster car, which it looked like he did before. That's Danica Patrick going underneath the 14 of Darren Manning, and that is four positions, so move Danica up to six. On lap 141, green flag pit stops already started to get underway, but unfortunately, the caution would come out again in the middle of the pit cycle. Power is into the wall, not a lot of severe damage, but that's right on the front stretch, so those teams can continue their pit work, but the pit lane will be closed. And again, it comes right at a time when we would have seen green flag pit stops for everybody. Well, in this situation right now, if Dixon was going to take a light load underneath green, you can rest assured that they will take a full load underneath this yellow. So that will maybe change their strategy. With Roger Yasakawa, it doesn't look like there's a lot of damage there, but the skid marks leading up to where his car is stopped makes it look like he just lost it coming out of four and was lucky not to collect the wall. In kind of a rare situation, Roger Yasakawa had his brakes overheat and catch on fire, which is pretty rare and unusual to happen on an oval. All the leaders would then hit pit road for their pit stop. Scott Dixon was able to get off pit road first and easily keep the lead of the race. But this is where the outcome of the race would change drastically. All the teams knew that they were just outside the pit window to making it all the way to the end of the race. And it was highly unlikely that from this point anyone would actually make it to the end on fuel. But three teams decided to take a gamble. Helio Castroneves, Danica Patrick, and Ed Carpenter all decided to take a gamble. And they all came in before the green flag flew to top off with fuel in hopes that they will be able to make it all the way to the end of the race from here. The race so far had several long green flag runs. So it's definitely a good gamble to think that it could go green all the way to the end from here. And that's exactly what happened. The green flag would fly again on lap 151. And you'll notice immediately that Danica Patrick gets passed by Ed Carpenter and Helio Castroneves as she immediately went into fuel savings mode. Things started to get very, very interesting when Ed Carpenter had to hit pit road. Even before leader Scott Dixon had to hit pit road, when Ed came in with Helio and Danica to top up, so you'd think he'd be able to make it, but he was just not getting good fuel mileage at all. The very next lap coming to five to go, leader Scott Dixon had to hit pit road. The rest of the leaders, Dan Weldon and Tony Kanon, would come in on the following lap, this giving Helio Castroneves the lead. Tim Sendrick, only five to go. You must make fuel. That's an indication to me, guys. They're going to roll the dice and try and go without pulling on to pit road. This is going to be close. He is working 48 laps since his last pit stop. There are three laps to go this time by. There is second place, Danica Patrick. She, too, on the same fuel strategy as with just about two and a half laps to go. The question is, She's who's faster. got it? And here she comes. Does she have enough fuel? She's going to take the high side. And Danica Patrick takes the lead at Motegi. Castro Nevis must believe that he's not going to make it to the end unless he's throttling back as much as he is. Has she been able to conserve fuel enough to be able to run this pace and make it to the end? That's going to be the interesting fact right now. Remember we said when these changes went on, will she be on the podium, maybe standing in the middle? This just might be her day. She's run so strong here before. A lap and a half to go for Danica Patrick. Remember at the beginning of this run, she fell back. She was saving fuel. Here she comes. The white flag this time by, and nobody within sight. Look at Mom Bev. One and a half miles to go for Danica Patrick and the Motorola team. Could history be made at Twin Ring Motegi? Down the backstretch for one more time. Does she have enough fuel to get around the final two corners? Into turns three and four. 
Danica Patrick coming out of four. And boys, move over. The lady is coming through. Danica Patrick wins a twin ring, Motegi. With that, Danica Patrick becomes the first ever female driver to win an IndyCar race. Making history, a lot of people like to give her flack that it was on fuel mileage, but hey, a win is a win, and at the end of the day, nobody's taking the trophy away from her. Back at her first trip, and it got everybody buzzing, and if you remember that year, she went on to lead at the Indianapolis 500, and then it all began. When can you win? When can you win? Well, now, Danica Patrick has won. It's going to make that long plane ride home for over, unless she's got tears coming to her eyes of 14 hours back to the United States, a little easier for Danica Patrick. Ticket sales at Kansas just went up. Jackaroo, it's all yours. Danica Patrick in tears. Getting the congratulations of her mom, Bev. An emotional time, Danica. Danica Patrick, welcome to IndyCar Victory Lane. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I was crying, but uh, it's a long time coming. <laughs> Finally. When you take a look at this weekend, and especially in this race, battling an understeer condition. Congrats, girl. Good job. Marco Andretti congratulating Danica. Understeer, and then all of a sudden, fuel conservation. How tough for you? I can't say that the last stint was exactly hard. Um, you know, you're, you're taking it easy and taking care of the car. I did feel like at the end that was, you know, the, that it was fast and that I was managing to save fuel while still keeping the speed up. And I'd heard, you know, from Kyle that, uh, you know, all I need to beat is Elio. So when I saw him, I knew I had been kind of saving a little extra throughout the stint and that, um, you know, I knew he was the one to beat and I didn't want to make the mistake of, you know, not pushing really hard to, to get by him. So it managed to be a little bit safer probably than I than I saw. But um, thank you to Andretti Green. Thank you to, you know, all my teammates. And finally. You know what? I got to ask you. When are you going to win again? <laughs> I hope next weekend. <laughs> Guys. Well, that's a wrap on today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel for more great IndyCar content just like this, as well as other racing-related content. And hit the like button if you enjoyed it, or hit the dislike button if you didn't like it at all. Either way, your feedback is greatly appreciated. I've noticed a lot of growth of the channel lately, especially through IndyCar videos, and I very much appreciate that. Thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody.